Hello and welcome back to the Project Management Prepcast. I'm your instructor, Cornelius Fichtner, and this lesson is recorded with a live audience on Facebook and YouTube. And as you can see here on the screen, we are going to be doing another PMP exam lessons learned again. Hello, everybody. So during the last PMP exam lessons learned, I got a comment from somebody saying, hey, uh, since you have a guest, I would like to be a guest as well. So guess what? Today, we once again have a guest and we are going to be welcoming Sudip Roy in just a moment. So we'll start out with a few lessons learned here. Then I'll bring in Sudip and I will end with lessons learned and also a take action. But before we jump into the first lessons learned here, don't forget that we do have a uh, full online suite of PMP exam preparation tools. On the left here, you see the PM Prepcast at pmprepcast.com. That is our on-demand self-study PMP training. And on the right, you can see the Prepcast simulator at pmexamsimulator.com. And I've spoken to Sudip before the interview, uh, before the live stream started, and he was very happy with it, as you will shortly hear. So to get this started, I want uh, to bring up a couple only of lessons learned. These are very recent lessons learned that I have picked off the internet. And I would like to start with exam duration. So in total, you will have uh, three hours and 50 minutes, so that's 230 minutes to take the exam. But that's not the type of duration I'm talking about. I am talking about the difficulty of keeping focus. That's what we want to talk about here. So these three lessons learned all basically say the same thing. The toughest part of the exam was definitely the length. Uh, it is similar to reading a textbook for four hours and maintaining your focus is tough. So this has always been the case. Uh, PMI reduced the duration from four hours to three hours and 50 minutes. But still, you know, sitting that long in front of a computer and answering 180 questions, that is tough. So this is definitely something that you want to be mentally prepared for as you go into the PMP exam. This person here says that by the third batch of 60 questions, I was struggling to stay focused and had to read the questions two to three times, right? So it's not just that also, right? It's the language, it's the focus, it's your mindset, right? All of that plays into it. So having a, an exam simulator and, and practicing this ahead of time will definitely help you. But more importantly, I think during your actual exam, you want to make sure that you do take your breaks. You have an opportunity to say, I don't want to take the break. You can simply click the next button once break one or break two begins, it's a 10 minute break in between the 60 questions and continue. But you want to stop, get a glass of water, have a drink, go to the restroom, you know, reset mentally for a few moments and then come back and continue. So please do take the breaks and don't skip them, right? From, from a mental perspective, this definitely helps. Then question content is the second lesson learned I would like to talk about before we bring Sudeep on the program here. And when I say question content, we have to be very careful about what we say. I will stay very general. We're not going to talk about any type of this is a question from the real exam. That would be very unethical. But it's OK for us to talk generically and from a very high level about what to expect. Right? And these are lessons learned, again, from others. Uh, the questions are designed around the team, new team members, junior team members, conflicts in the team, all kinds of situations like that. So as project managers, managing the team, 
resolving conflict. That's a big part of our work and do expect questions on that. The self-organizing concept is used in questions as much as the servant leadership concept, right? What you really want to do is uh, help the team solve the problem themselves. Don't try and find, okay, don't try and find uh, help from the outside. Find help from the inside. A uh, question from Maduri. What is the basic number of questions on the exam? It is 180 questions, Maduri. All right. Uh, moving on, 90% uh, of the questions were scenario-based. Now, this is old. We knew that, right? Uh, we've known from the past that the questions are scenario-based, but seeing this and again and again that people say, yes, the questions are scenario-based, that means PMI has not changed their style, has not changed the content. So do expect scenario-based uh, questions where something happens and what should you do next? What should you do first, right? And you have to understand what comes next and how things are progressing. Then you need to understand the role of the project manager, the project owner, team members, stakeholders, agile, hybrid. And by the way, I once we uh, say farewell to Sudeep, I'm going to talk a lot more about hybrid uh, later on. So do stay tuned after that uh, if you want to learn more about agile and hybrid and how much we have on that in the exam. And then situational questions about stakeholder communication, scope, requirements, team members, top level issues, next steps, what should have been done. And if you know the exam content outline, then this is no surprise to you because all of these topics are part of PMI's exam content outline. So it's good to see that the exam content outline, which defines what is supposed to be on the PMP exam, is reflected in the lessons learned. So people are actually seeing this is what I'm supposed to be tested on. Well, this is what I am being tested on. It is a match. Again, we'll talk a little later uh, about the exam content outline. But now it is time to bring Sudip Roy onto the program. Here we go. Hello, Sudip. Welcome. Hi, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me here. Yeah. It's, it's a wonderful pleasure to talk yeah. to you. Yeah, well, it's great to have you. So once again, Sudip said last week when we had the uh, previous live stream here, hey, I want to come on the program. If you yourself have recently passed the PNP exam and <laughs> you would like to be in Sudip's place, please do write, just leave a comment and we'll bring you on as well. Before we get started, Sudip, what happened last Saturday again? <laughs> so it was a... This Saturday, both my wife and myself, we had another <laughs> PMI exam. Uh, so she took the PMP exam, uh, and then I took the PMI SAP exam, um, and then we, you know, we both cleared it. So again, thanks to the simulator, um, she used the the PMP simulator from you from the one that you have, and then I also referred to the SAP simulator. So we are more of a uh, PM Prepcast family. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, so you passed your PMP two months ago, right? Yeah, I passed in yeah. December. The exact date is December 19th of right. 2021. And then she cleared uh, this Saturday. Okay, wonderful. Well, congratulations to you on the PMP and the ACP, and of course, congratulations to your wife as well. How did you study? I believe you mentioned earlier on that you started with the pinball guide, but you got bored? Yeah, I, I, I won't say I got bored, but um, I felt it was a little disengaging. Um, um, and um, I think I switched to Rita, and that helped a lot. To, to stay focused um, because primarily I think, uh, you know, you, you can relate a lot the way the language is uh, with your day-to-day -day life um, and, and the work that we do. So Rita was primarily the first preference. I am not saying that I didn't read 
Fembox 6 edition, I had to go back when I started, you know, preparing for uh, all the exam simulator and reviewing all the questions. Uh, but first, my first, uh, the way I started was Rita, the 10th edition. I completed all the chapters and then I also completed their chapter wise questions. And then after I complete Rita's chapter wise questions, then I switched to your simulator because your simulator has each individual chapter wise questions, practice questions, which kind of helps, um, you know, to make sure whether the, the depth of the knowledge that we got from the book from Rita was good enough or whether we have to refer back to any other book, including Pimbok. And that's when I saw there are a lot of um, gaps that I had, even though Rita was good, but there are few things that I was missing on some of the uh, key uh, you know, knowledge areas. Uh, then I referred back to Pimbok 6 edition, you know, highly, highly highlighted all the notes. I have the physical book uh, and, um, and then I you know, started finishing all the chapters one by one. Um, once I completed one complete set of the Rita's each and every chapter, and then I also felt confident about each and every chapter wise exam from the PrepCast exam simulator, uh, then I was ready to give the full mock, um, which is really, really helpful in terms of uh, time management, because I think the first mock that I took I think we, I just had five, 10 minutes left, uh, even though it, your simulator has like additional, uh, the break time, which is like 10 and 10, 20 minutes included. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, so I should have... that's a good segue because we have a question here from Fusion Recipes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Somebody from Fusion Recipes is studying for the people. Is the, uh, does that include the 20 minute break time? So the 230 minutes are just for the questions, right? Yes, so 20 yeah. minutes is separate. Yeah. Exactly. And in our simulator, it is different because we do not force you to take the breaks. So what we have done is we give you 250 minutes, and then it is up to you to manage the break time. Uh, but you said the first one, you used the break time to answer questions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was a lesson learned for me because I need to do a proper time management. Um, but the next one, the second sim, uh, ex full exam simulator that I took, it was pretty, you know, I had a, a planned way of first 60 question, I should be somewhere around this much time. And the second 60 question, I should be somewhere around this. So I, I was able to plan and take a proper break. And then um, I still had around 10 minutes left uh, before I finished the final, um, you know, final question. Uh, that was my strategy. And the, the confidence level, I think, I think many people have this question is, when am I ready? Am I really ready to take the schedule, the actual exam? And I think, um, you know, I heard from you and I heard from, you know, from a few of my colleagues and, and some of the good instructors that once you have consistency in around 75 and plus in the prep cast, uh, then I think... You, you, you can go ahead and, and uh, schedule your exam. And I saw both my, both my prep class full mocks were around that 75, 76. Uh, and then, you know, I said, okay, then uh, there is no good time. I think this is, this is, this is the best way that you can judge yourself. And, uh, and, and I, I felt like I started figuring it out how to eliminate out of those four questions or four options. How can you eliminate the bad ones? And I know many people say like, you know, the out of four, two, two of them would be kind of distractors you can easily eliminate. But the, the, the tough thing comes between the, you know, the other two. Um, so that was tricky, but somehow I got, you know, the more I practiced, I think I got used to that. And of course, it gets harder and harder because the new question types, it's like six answers, select three. Right, which are the three correct ones, or then you have the drag and drop where you have to drag things into the correct order or, or right. matching, right? So that becomes much harder because, especially in the matching, there's only one correct answer, right? If, if you match things incorrectly, then yeah, it is wrong. And we have a clarification question here. Uh, Sancha Soja asked, you switched to what? 
Rita, yeah, this is Rita Mulcahy's book, uh, RMC Project. Uh, that is the company, and uh, her book is generally known as Rita's book. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and did you create a study plan at all? How how did you how did you focus? How did you plan this out? What was your approach? Did your company support you in any way? Uh, Yes, that's a good good, good question, Cornelius. So yeah, my I was uh, initially I planned, and I was preparing myself, and then I got to know that this is something that my company that I work for they also encourage and support. So they have a very uh, streamlined process. They do this every, I think they do a one week boot camp, um, from eight to five the entire one week. You, they train us, and they they have a policy that you know they have they have seen that the maximum benefit that people get out of this program is they have a strict policy that you have to take the exam within 30 working days um, after the one week bootcamp is over. So that kind of pushed hard, I think, to all of us because of our, you know, everybody is obviously busy with their personal work or their or the day-to-day -day work from office. Uh, but, you know, we had to set a plan and, and that 30 days time, uh, including or excluding the one week boot camp, uh, that kind of set us up like, okay, I have to make sure I have dedicated time. Um, so my plan was uh, my work hours are from eight o'clock in the morning or 8.30 in the morning till like five, 5.30, uh, six o'clock. Um, so I had to schedule some time, focus time in the morning around like six o'clock, like six to eight. Uh, two hours in the morning and then after my work uh, somewhere around like 7 seven thirty, 30 uh, after dinner uh, you know I used to sit and study for at least at least the time like when I feel that I'm I'm done with what I planned for that particular night or for the day so I had a very uh, planned approach for each and every knowledge area how much time I should be uh, you know, dedicating how much time I left because I kind of backtracked from the 30 days um, and, um, and you know, constant feedback, discussing with my wife. And obviously, you know, you need to have very dedicated family support because that those couple of, I mean, one and a half months, I think, you know, I was totally, I had everything switched off. My phone and all distractors were like, kind of, you know, in a, in a dis non, do not disturb mode uh, because everybody has to support. And all my family members, my wife, my close relatives, uh, they all knew that, you know, this one and a half months or two months period, I need to focus to get this done. Um, so that's how I prepared for at least last, like that two months mm -hmm. period. Now, since your wife also took the exam, right? She took it about two months after. Mm -hmm. When you were done, what did you tell your wife, right? What did you tell her in terms of this is what you should do differently that you think, you know, our audience would also like to know that? Yeah. So one thing I told her that, like, like I mentioned, initially, I started with the Pimbox 6 edition. Uh, I spent maybe a couple of weeks trying to understand each and every concept. Uh, I told her that when she was preparing I, I started, you start with Rita, the 10th edition. You don't spend that initial two weeks, uh, you know, that you can focus on Rita first. And she she immediately picked up the language of Rita, the 10th edition, and she found that it's more engaging. So that was one, um, one point that I mentioned, and I think that was helpful to her. And then um, I told her that um, don't, just don't wait uh, till you're completely done with, all the chapters just immediately use this prep cast simulator they have practice questions on each and every knowledge areas and each and every chapter uh, so you, you, the more you give exam um, you understand where you're lacking or the you know you get a proper understanding of that subject uh, because the explanation uh, i mean i must I, I don't know how how more i can say the explanation on each and every question on your simulator, Cornelius, is is so deep and so helpful to understand. Uh, I would say, I think in my batch of my company that you know, we the boot camp that I attended, there were around 30 to 40, 35 uh, you know practitioners from our company. Everybody, 
I don't remember anybody, you know, praising how much importance the prep car simulator is. And I think they wow. all learned so much from, from the explanation. <laughs> um, and some people, I think they score, they, they might have answered like 2000, 2200 questions, including practice exams. So, uh, you know, hats off to that that level of explanation. And the best part is not only the correct answer, like many exam simulators, they have the explanation why out of these four options, maybe the option C is the correct answer and they're explaining more, but not everybody explains why all the other three options are incorrect, which is so helpful. Um, and one last thing I want to point out that I also took the 50 PMP exam the most difficult that people usually get right. it incorrect. That's, uh, that's the book here behind me that you oh, see right yeah. there in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. I have the Kindle version. I took that. It also helped me a lot. It Initially, it was a little tough to digest. I thought, oh, I know this. I know this. But then I was getting incorrect. And then I was like, okay, let me see the explanation. And again, there, the explanations are pretty detailed. You understand why you got that wrong. Right. Let's bring up a few questions that we have here from, from folks. Uh, Maduri asks, are there any specific guides for the PIMBOK guide? Well, Maduri, the, the um, book we talked about, Rita, that can be considered a, a PMP exam guide, but it includes a lot of the information about the PIMBOK guide. And also my prep cost training course also is intended as a guide to the PMP exam and the PIMBOK guide. Um, then we have a question here from uh, Lani Dennis. Is the exam 50% agile, 50% predictive? Sudeep, what was it for you? How do you feel about that? So that's the understanding I had uh, when I started preparing in 2021 after the, you know, the, the, the content was changed. Yeah. Updated, yes. Uh, updated. Uh, but when I took the exam, the real exam, I felt more than 70 to 80 questions that I got were all about Agile or Agile or plus minus hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say, you know, you need to, uh, we need to be very careful. We need to understand the Agile concepts. Um, and even though it's not a straightforward question, but they will have somewhere in the question about uh, something about the Agile term, whether it's the role, whether it's, some of the ceremonies backlog uh, is mentioned or incremental delivery exactly. and, and all those 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 terms that give you a pointer this is an agile question versus yeah. a, another question right 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 um what would you say there is a question again from fusion recipes are the exam questions more similar to the prep cost simulator or did you even use pmi study hall uh, I heard about that uh, study hall, but I think that got uh, decommissioned or uh, oh, okay. I'm not sure if it's available right now because I heard a lot of people uh, initially they were you know, using that study hall, but then somebody said that it's not available anymore. Um, so I just use PrepCast. Um, and I think uh, to answer your question, um, it's very difficult to say whether it's similar or whether it's you know the actual questions because I don't honestly I don't remember the entire it's questions. Two months for you, right? Yeah. Uh, look, um, let's bring but, your wife in and see what she says. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I I mean more. I think the best part I would say is before anybody is going for the actual exam, they have to have self confidence, and that that you can gain definitely from from you know, using the prep cast simulator with all the explanations that you guys have for all the questions, so. Right, okay, and, and that brings me right to the previous question that uh, he or she asked. Um, exam is scheduled on Sunday. Uh, looks like they get about 65%, can't get above 65. Um, personally, I would say 65 is on the low end, right? Um, you, and this is now very, very personal, right? There is no guarantee. Somebody could get 40% in our simulator and still pass the exam. Somebody could get 80% on our simulator and fail the exam. There is always this, this crossover lap, right? But statistically speaking, 
with 65% correct in our exam simulator, you are just a little bit below the best performance, right? Um, but you should still be able to pass with this number. Maybe not all, you know, above target, above target, above target. It'll be more like target, target, target. But nobody will ever ask you, well, what was your, did, did you pass AT or did you pass with Ts, right? So, um, like you said, you need confidence, right? When did you know I have the confidence? I'm ready. Um, so, I took this, when I took the second mock, full mock from PrepCast, Mm -hmm. And my score was around 76%. I was, um, I was, I felt it, I'm confident that I can take the next uh, actual exam. Um, and I think more importantly is at least I would recommend that people should take more than one because sometimes what happens is like the first one, you know, you take somehow, you know, you get a good score, but you have to have the consistency. So if you take at least two, I know it's like four hours, you know, taking the full mock sometimes can be a little difficult, um, but eventually it prepares all of us for the real exam. So it's, it's really helpful. Um, so if you have consistency, um, you know, like 75 or whatever number you are looking for, I think if you have consistency, at least for two or three max, I think then you, you should be you should feel confident that you should be good for the exam. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. just to add to what the other question was asked, I think many of our our colleagues who are part of that uh, uh, boot camp, even they uh, their scores were like around sixty five to seventy, um, and you know they they took their real exam and they cleared it with all three above targets. Uh, so I think it's all about the mindset, your, your confidence, and when you go to the real exam. Yeah, exactly. And also, um, you know, if you have your exam scheduled for this Sunday, like this person has, that means you have, what, less than a week. That means you have studied until now. You, you know this stuff. It's in your head. So at this point, the best thing to do is keep using the simulator, answer practice questions, learn from why is this correct and not that correct. So that's the kind of, of approach you should have at this point in time here. Um, this is a question that I w would love to ask your wife as well, because she just took the exam uh, this weekend. When you took the exam, were the questions very lengthy with a lot of unnecessary information in them? Was that the case? I would say uh, for me, I think if I remember correctly, there were, there were a few questions which were pretty lengthy, but not many. Uh, okay. Maybe out of 180, maybe 10 uh, 10 or 12 of those, mm -hmm. but I would re definitely say this point. There were options which were lengthy. Um, so even if oh, some of the answer choices were lengthy, exactly, yeah, like short question, but then long, 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 long. Okay, yeah, with some commas and you know, just going and you have to read the complete mm -hmm. option, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you still have to read for a considerable amount of time, but. Yeah, I didn't get a lot many, uh, maybe maximum, maybe 10 big questions with a lot of distractors. Okay. Yeah. What about formula-based questions? Did you have any calculations or was it more interpretation? It was more of an interpretation. Yes. Uh, there was no such question where I really had to you know, have a, because anyhow, I took a proctor-based. Uh, so I you were at home, okay. Yeah. Exactly. So... I didn't have any option to keep anything on my desk, like mm -hmm. not even a paper. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't get any of those calculation based question, but yeah, I, there were a couple of questions which were more of an interpretation, how you right. understand. Yeah. Uh, yes. And uh, this is the case when uh, the question on the exam could say something like the SPI on your project is X. What do you tell your sponsor? Right. right. So you have to not only understand what SPI equals X means, but what is the appropriate action to take? So that is the interpretation. By the way, uh, if I ask somebody else, did you have formula questions on the exam? They might say, yes, I had one calculation. I had two calculations. That is at the moment the maximum. Everybody gets interpretational 
uh, formulas. And some people also do get, I had to calculate, but it was simple calculations. It's not like, you know, you need to have a mathematical degree. Now, let's move on from how you studied to the actual exam, because you said that you took the exam at home. Um, how much before the actual exam did you log on to the system? Um, 30 minutes, half an hour. Minutes, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was pretty smooth. Was that um, not, no, no problem at all then? I didn't face any problems. Uh, all my check-in process, it was all on the phone. So, you know, uh, you can take the picture of your desk space, uh, what is in the front, what is in the back, what's on the mm -hmm. right, left. You should take your uh, the pictures and then uh, on your phone. And then you can, you, I think you have to upload or take a picture of your photo uh, ID. Um, and then um, it was, I think it was maybe like 10, 10 minutes max, mm -hmm. 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so uh, they call you on your phone to do the check-in? No, they don't call you. So once you... Uh, once you're in the Pearson website, uh, when you actually, you know, yeah. ready to do the check-in, there are options presented on the screen. So do you want to do check-in from, from the browser, like from your laptop yeah. or the machine that you're using, or you want to use your phone? So I used the option of phone where you can uh, basically scan a QR code, which is on the screen. So take okay. the phone, uh, open the camera and just, you know, use it, the scan. Take pictures and the... the pictures yes. get forwarded to the proctor okay exactly yeah understood um and uh, and then once you do that uh, i think there are a couple of uh, tutorials uh, if i remember yeah uh, i think i just took it on the saturday for the acp but yeah it was like like 3 4 or i think there are seven pages that they will talk about some tutorials like how do you go back how do you do previous how do you mark for flag all that questions and i think you get 10 minutes on that but i don't think you don't really have to you know spend the entire 10 minutes to go through it um, so you can utilize like some time there uh, one thing i want to suggest which was actually something that my wife uh, before she took the exam she went to the pmi website and she figured out this part and this might be helpful which i didn't know during my pmp exam but i utilized this trick uh, during my ACP exam. So what happens uh, when the actual question comes, the entire screen, it looks like the way the pixels are, it's not very clear. I mean, it's like very s small font size, the question mm -hmm. is, and, and the next button is right on the, you know, the below right corner. So the question is on the top and then the, the right next button is on the bottom. So it's very difficult sometimes to read the question. Uh, at least, you know, I think some of us felt. So there is an option, and it's on the PMI website, that you can actually increase the font size of the question by pressing, uh, like if you have a Mac, then you can say Command and Plus. Uh, or uh, I think on Windows, it's Control and Control plus, plus. probably, yeah. yeah. So when you do that, then the font size will increase. Oh, great. Uh, but nothing will dramatically change on the screen. It will be like you still have the next button in the same place. It's just a visual thing. You know, Visually kind of better. Felt. Okay. Yeah. That's good so, to know. Yeah. yeah. So I, How was the Pearson View experience for you and your wife? No problems at all? Did you have any technical difficulties? No, we didn't have any technical difficulties. Uh, um, I think we got used to, I mean, at least I, this is my third Pearson view, uh, proctor based exam. I took some other, uh, non PMI exams last year. Uh, and it was very smooth. It was the only feedback that I gave to them during the survey, uh, was the, you know, there is a, on the top where they have a small screen where they are constantly monitoring you. Yeah. There's a small, uh, kind of, a I don't know how to say there's a, portion where you can see a whiteboard option and some chat option mm -hmm. that that you cannot move anywhere so what happens is sometimes overlaps the question or at least it comes very close to the question oh. so if they can oh. just allow us to move it somewhere on the right or wherever it is then it becomes like a less of a distraction but i mean i think those are like some things that you worry initially like the first when you are 
starting the exam. And once the you get thing. used to it, it's it's yeah. normal, right? Once you, you're you in the zone, then you don't see it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Was there anything that surprised you about taking the exam itself? Was there were there any surprises for you? Mm. Yeah, n- not. Mm. Not really. I, I was just hoping that the, at the end, when the congratulations message comes, I was hoping it will be little, like little dramatic, like "Hey, you passed." But it's the it's. I mean, it's yeah. just one line. Many people, many people say, "I didn't know if I had passed or not." Because the message is sort of congratulations, but congratulations, you finished, or congratulations, you passed. What is it? But when it says congratulations, that means you passed. That's what I have learned in, in, in now. Yeah. Uh, yep. How many questions did you mark for review on the exam? Um, in the PMP, I think I marked for maybe six or eight, um, that's it. I didn't, I, 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 I didn't plan to mark a lot uh, because, you know, I, I just feel like it's um, the way I practiced my mocks. Uh, I always wanted to have, if I have time, I can go back at the end, but uh, I, I just, I didn't have to mark more than uh, like six or eight questions uh, in the PMP. But in the ACP exam, uh, I had to mark at least 10 or 12 questions. But I mean, that's a different exam altogether. Um, uh, But yeah, for PMP, it was not more than six to eight questions that I marked for review. Right. We have a couple more questions about your study approach here before we close it off. Um, One question, did you memorize any ITTOs, input tool, techniques, outputs? No. did you take a boot camp? I believe you took a course from your employer, right? Yes. 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 So this is not something that is open uh, to the public. Um, let's see. Uh, did you memorize formulas? Did you memorize ITTOs? No. Because so, memorization doesn't help anymore on the PMP exam. When no. I took it back in 2004, very helpful. Now, forget it. Yeah. Yeah, because in uh, the batch of the the uh, my my companies, uh, when they you know use this boot camp, the the previous batch, you know we we get to know them, we get to talk to them, and we got some feedback from them. Said uh, out of their entire group of twenty five to thirty people, all all of them, none of them actually got any you know in uh, like very specific calculation based questions. So they also suggested that you know you, you just have to understand the concept, like like you mentioned, what is a CPI, what is a SPI, and what does it mean if if the SPI value is less than one or greater than one. That's the level of understanding. If you have, um, <clears throat> I think it should be good. So, yeah. <laughs> Once you were done, if you had been at a testing center, they would have handed you a printed exam report but since you took it online you received electronic communication how quickly did pearson send you an email how quickly did pmi confirm that yes you have passed yeah it's a good question because a lot of us were like we were not sure after you get that congratulation message you just take the survey and then it's done so then what what should i do what like what's happening uh, so to answer your question from Pearson, I think I got the email uh, in next 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, that's very and, good. Yeah, and then they will provide you <clears throat> a score, uh, the score report, or the, I think score sheet or something they say. Uh, exam report, yeah. Yeah, which will tell you like <clears throat> whether you have above target or target um, and all that information. And from PMI, I think I had to wait for a couple of days, maybe two days or one, yeah, two days I had to wait to get the final confirmation. And it actually, you know, you can actually get your certificate from from the PMI uh, website after. So there was no physical, you didn't get anything in the mail, like a printed version of it. You download it and print it yourself. Yes. Yeah, there is no physical mail uh, from 
from here. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the program today. Final question. What is your number one recommendation to everybody who is preparing for their PMP exam? So my number one recommendation, I think, on list would be uh, have self-confidence, uh, have believe in yourself. Uh, and the only way, at least for us, me and my wife, the way it worked out to boost your confidence is by taking a good simulator. Um, and I think for both of us, we cannot stress so much uh, apart from saying that the prep cost, the PM prep cost exam simulator for PMP specifically is, I think that's the best uh, in terms of the explanation, the level of explanation that they uh, that you will find in each and every options. Like I mentioned, even if it's incorrect, if say there are four options, A, B, C, D, if option A is correct, it definitely will include why, why option A is uh, correct, but then it will also include similar level of explanation on all those three incorrect options. And it will help all of us to understand so that if you get similar kind of situation on the next question or the next mock, you will be able to easily eliminate. So definitely have this, uh, you know, it, the, a very good simulator that we have here. Uh, and then just have self-belief. Um, I'll tell you one last thing is like the day that we had the exam, like the, for example, my wife took it on, on Saturday. Friday, we just watched a nice movie in, in the night having dinner. We didn't stress so much because at that point in time, you know, after studying for two months, the last day you will not, I don't think we will gain a lot of things. Uh, and since there is not many things to memorize, it's more of a conceptual scenario based uh, situation. You just have to, you know, just have a very good time the day, the night before the exam, have a good sleep, and then just go for the exam. Uh, so self belief is very important. And you get that confidence once you take um, at least two to three full mock exams. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sudeep. Thank you for being here with us today. We appreciate your time with us. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cornelius. And thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And I really hope that many, many folks take the advantage of such a nice simulator that you guys have. Uh, and all the best to all your students. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right, everybody. Uh, I am myself amazed about the nice words that Sudip had to say. And just so that we are absolutely clear, I had no idea what Sudip was going to say and how much he likes our simulator. So uh, thank you there, Sudip, for those really, really uh, kind words right there. And in that regard, there's also the question here from uh, Nishil, is the prep cost simulator updated lately? Um, in fact, the prep cost simulator is updated almost daily. Um, we have a constant feedback loop with our students. We keep updating questions. We add new questions. We improve questions. So there is not lately. Uh, it's today. It's yesterday. It's tomorrow. We continuously update our exam simulator. And now, now that we have uh, said goodbye to Sudip, let us continue with a few more lessons learned here, beginning with the question difficulty there. And I think in regards to the question difficulty, this here sums it up. Never at any time did I feel like, oh yeah, no brainer, I totally know this question. So when you take the PMP exam, you have to go into the exam with the understanding that even though I have studied and I have used the simulator and I've, I've read the PMBOK guide and all the books and taken a course, there will still be a vagueness, a, a hardness about these questions that is going to stump you. So be prepared for that. Just understand that this is the way it's going to be. As you are taking the real exam, you will not feel at the end, oh yeah, this is great. I'm flying through this. Check, 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 check. I'm passing, I'm passing, I'm passing. It will be, for most people, the other way around. Oh, I'm failing, oh, I'm failing, oh, I'm failing. And at the end, it'll say, congratulations, you have passed. Question style is also very important because 
um, we discussed that during the during the conversation. Did you memorize anything? And Sudeep said, no, I didn't memorize anything because PMI is really trying to measure how much you are able to apply the knowledge in real life scenarios. And memorization simply will not help, right? Same thing here. This person said another factor is the real life experience, right? And there is still a focus. PMI wants you to answer questions in a certain way, but that doesn't mean that certain way is wrong, right? Even in the real life, you, you have to manage a project in a specific way, following specific principles. And this is what PMI is looking for. Um, here is the confirmation of this. Memorization will not help you pass the exam. We have changed a long time ago, and we are no longer recommending that people memorize things. We recommend that people understand things. There are still things that you need to memorize. For example, you can come across a question on the exam where you have to calculate uh, present value, um, uh, SPI, um, those kind of formulas, you have to memorize those. You have to have them in your head. But it's not like, you know, that the memorization will help you pass the exam. The understanding what the formula is, ability to be able to calculate it, and then make an interpretation from it. That's the more important bit. But you still need to know the formulas, just as one of the examples. Then, we didn't talk about this with Sudeep, but the exam content outline is a very important document. You need to understand the exam content outline. Here's an example, lesson learned. There was a question that referenced personality indicators. I never saw anything about this tool in any of my studying. Okay, and now you might say, well, what does that have to do with the exam content outline? Very simple. The exam content outline mentions personality indicator by name in, let's see, where is that again? Task 14 from the people domain, where it says, promote team performance through the application of emotional intelligence using personality indicators. So if this person had indeed looked at the exam content outline, they would know that. So here is my tip for you. Download the exam content outline. I will give you a link at the end where you can do this. I want you to print it. Then I want you to take red, green, and yellow markers, and you'll go through it. And obviously, you know, everything that you know, green, everything that you don't know, red and the things that you kind of like eh, maybe i'm not sure yellow now you have a focus now you can see exactly i have to study this i have to learn more about that i have no idea what this is i need to really look into this so this is a good way of using the exam content outline for yourself personally a little bit in order to practice and and study your uh, your weak areas all right I promised we would talk about Agile later on because Agile is the big topic in all lessons learned that I'm reading at the moment. Agile dominates lessons learned. And the reason for this is manifold. Um, I think one reason is it's relatively new. It's only been about a year that PMI has added Agile to the PMP exam. So many PMP exam takers are still trying to get their head around Agile. Not everybody uses Agile, and yet 50% of the exam is Agile, and there is also hybrid. Okay, So in many cases, people are just stumped by Agile questions. Okay, So here we go. Read the Agile part of the PIMBOK guide and the tailoring and hybrid projects. This uh, lesson learned is becoming a little outdated because this references the PIMBOK guide 6th edition. Now that the 7th edition is out, um, it's probably more like you have to read the Agile part of PMI Standards Plus, which is the online repository where PMI in the future will have the information from PIMBOK guide 6th edition. Okay, But you want to know about 
agile because you want to just make sure that you know how to move in agile, change requests, uh, people conflicts, motivation, team skill set, right? You really have to understand agile and how agile works on real life scenario. Uh, same thing here. General tip would be to have a good knowledge of agile and scrum methodologies, and in particular, roles and responsibilities for the players within the team. The next lesson learned is exactly the same. Full of agile questions, no scrum, Kanban, retrospectives, leadership styles, implement or starting agile, moving from predictive to agile. And then he also had two questions to calculate then drag and drop scenarios. Uh, Based on all of this, you can now already tell, you know, two people talked about Scrum. Yes, Scrum is important. And I do recommend that you study the Scrum Guide. And again, link to the Scrum Guide will come up at the end. All right. And then uh, another person who says that we have done an excellent job in explaining uh, all these questions in the exam simulator and clarifying a lot of that. Now, I'm bringing this up because I want to show you a statistic. Statistically, we have shown that PMI ACP students are better at agile questions than PMP students. Not surprising, right? PMP students take an exam that is a generalist exam that includes agile, ACP students are taking a specific agile focused exam. So it's not surprising that ACP students are better at agile than PMP students, but the numbers are still surprisingly high. We have several questions in our PMP exam simulator that are exactly the same as in the agile simulator. I mean, there's only so much you can ask about a retrospective, right? Or a or a, a burn down chart or a burn up chart. The questions are exactly the same, right? Whether it's for ACP or for PMP. And and here are the numbers. So two questions randomly selected from our PMP and ACP simulator. You could see 72% had that question correct for PMI ACP. Only 48% had it correct for PMP. And the same with the next question, 67, 36. I mean, that's what, that's almost half, 50% less people are doing this on the uh, PMP exam. And with that, I just want to make it absolutely clear to you, you really need to understand Agile, and you probably also want to use an exam simulator in order to prep for it. So Agile, very, very important. Hybrid, also important. Now, this is what I do not really know. Does PMI say agile and hybrid? Does PMI have hybrid and plan-driven waterfall together? We don't know. So many people say it was 75% agile and hybrid and only 25% waterfall plan-driven, right? Does How does PMI assign these? We don't really know. But what we do know is that according to the exam content outline, 50 is supposed to be agile and hybrid and 50 is supposed to be plan driven, right? Why so many people report back that they feel agile and hybrid is much bigger. We don't know. It just seems to be in their minds. It sticks more. That could be it. Anyway, hybrid, right? Many questions about traditional project management team moving to agile or hybrid methodology, best practices to do so, right? Again, it is important to understand the Scrum sprint cycle. And this is what I was just talking about here, probably like 75 to 85% hybrid agile related questions. And again, I dispute this finding because the exam content outline says 50-50, therefore it is 50-50, but in your mind, it just seems like every Five out of 10 questions, no, actually 75, seven and a half questions out of 10 talks about agile, right? So that's in your mind and not in the actual exam. 
Yeah, and before we close this off, um, please allow me to remind you that we do have our full suite of PMP training courses and simulators on the left, the PrepCost training course at peerprepcost.com, and on the right, the PrepCost simulator, of which you have heard great things today at pmexamsimulator.com. I promised you that I would give you a few links here at the end, and these are the three links that I would like to suggest today. First of all, the exam content outline at pmprepcast.com slash PMP outline. And remember what I want you to do. I want you to print it, and I want you to highlight red, green, and yellow everything that you do know or do not know from the exam content outline. Then the APG, that is the Agile Practice Guide. This is a guide from PMI, pmprepcast.com slash APGDL, as in Agile Practice Guide Download, APGDL. And last but not least, you want to review the Scrum Guide at scrumguides.org. And please note there is an S at the end, so it's not Scrum Guide. Dot org. It is scrumguides.org. Yeah, and this takes us very, very close to the end of today's lesson. Before I go, let me just say once again that if you are interested in being a guest on one of these events, please do write to us, either support at pmprepcast.com or just leave a comment here uh, with this video, and we'll be happy to welcome you on the program. But I also want to say that I have a lot more lessons learned for you here. We haven't talked about definitions, ITTOs, question content, difficulty, technology, the whiteboard, taking the exam, exam duration, time management, taking breaks, and ending the exam. All of that will be coming your way on a future session like this one about lessons learned with all of these additional topics. That's it from me today. Thank you very much for joining me. Until next time. But before we go, don't forget, this lesson is part of a series in which I help you be better prepared for your PMP exam. So please do visit pmprepcast.com slash more to watch all of them.